Shalom, my angel. Welcome to Healthy in Heart. And I hope you are healthy in heart, mind, body, and soul today. Um, and you will often hear me talk about um, me being a realist. Now you have optimists, you have pessimists, you have realists. Um, an optimist looks at, well, the glass is half full. Pessimist, the glass is half empty. A realist looks at it and says, hey, you know that glass is refillable, right? <laughs> So that's me. I'm a realist. I look at what is real, tangible. Um, and you'll often may hear me say, um, my daddy's not a, a candy maker. I don't know how to sugarcoat anything. Okay. Um, I don't sugarcoat the truth. The truth is what it is. Um, and you'll often hear me say it is what it is. Mm -hmm. This is the situation. And if I don't know what the situation is, I don't know how to deal with the situation, whether to make it improve the situation or make it worse. Um, and if you ignore it or you don't look at it as what it actually is, if you sugarcoat it or you be optimist about, optimistic about it, you're not going to get positive changes. If you're pessimistic about it, you're not going to get positive changes. So it really doesn't matter with which end of the spectrum you fall on. But um, if you start looking at situations as how they really are, not how you perceive them, not how somebody else might look at them, not how they might, uh, what they might think of you, but what the situation actually is, then you can get an honest view and change what needs to be changed to make it work for you. Um, now, because I don't sugarcoat things, uh, people can find me a little harsh because I, I just, I don't sugarcoat things. Now, I am not cruel. Some people are realist and they are cruel but you don't have to be. That's a choice. Being cruel to people is a choice. You can be kind and be honest at the same time. It's possible. It's doable. It's very easy to do. Um, and you know, you, you just keep in mind that people do have feelings and being part of society. A lot of people will say, well, I'm not responsible for how you feel. Yes, you are. If you do something or say something that hurt to intentionally hurt that person, so you're responsible. And then you're responsible for what that person does afterwards. In my view. So you can be a realist. You can be someone who looks at what is versus what, um, what could be, what should be, what might've been, um, and, and look at the actual situation for what it is. Um, we can play all kinds of mind games with, uh, with ourselves. Coulda, woulda, shoulda, might've. Um, there, there's an infinite number of possibilities um, for how any situation will turn out. But there's only one possibility for how things are right now. And part of being honest with yourself and with others is looking at it with an honest point of view without um, being overly negative, without being overly positive. Look, this, this is the situation. This is what it is. And okay, if, if, if it, is it working for me? Is it not working for me? If it's not working for you, change it. Because while well, they say the definition of insanity is to do the same thing over and over again, expect a different result. Um, it's definitely crazy. I don't know if that's the definition of insanity or not, but it's definitely crazy to keep doing the same thing over and over again, expecting something different. If you want different, you have to do different. You can't keep doing the same thing over and over and over again. That's why I'm offering all these um, things that I found to be helpful because I have gone through a lot of behavior modification. I have studied that in school. That's been one focus of my education because I do have a deaf autistic daughter that I adopted and she does want attention right now. Hold on. Um, so, so that's my life. Um, so I forgot where I was at. Honey, yesterday's gone. 
It's gone. Today is a new day, right? And you can make good choices today. Yeah? I know you can. So I studied behavior modification um, specifically um, because I needed that information to help my daughter. She's deaf autistic. I adopted her as a single parent, newly single parent. Um, as a matter of fact, while the adoption was going through, my husband up and moved away and left. And so I ended up adopting her by myself. Um, he did not want to be responsible for another child. Um, so I adopted her by myself as a single mother and my wonderful husband has adopted us both. So, um, that he, he's such a blessing. Um, but that's all point. So behavior modification is really important, but for behavior modification to be successful, um, you've got to look at the situation for, with all the variables that you know and examine it and study it. And you know, this is what it is. You may want it to be different, but this is what it is. And you can work on making it different, but not until you recognize what it is. Um, so, I mean, that, that's why a lot of times I will say it is what it is. Um, because some things you can't change. Um, they're not in your power to change. They're not in your purview to change. But there are a lot of things that you can change. There are a lot of things that you can control in your own body, in your own mind, in your own environment that can um, work to your favor. So I, I will talk more about behavior modification in a, more videos, but um, to start with, for be, any behavior modification to be successful, you have to look at what the situation is, what variables are contributing, um, and you got to look at it honestly because, like I said, if you're going to delude yourself, what's the point of even trying? Be honest with yourself and honest with others. Um, when I worked for um, a local community services board, um, we had a diagnostic criteria team. Um, and what we would do we, was mental health patients, <clears throat> most of them freshly released from the hospitals. And we would look at the person in their situation and there were like, people from different spectrums, um, different venues, like case managers, supervisors, um, doctors, psychiatrists. We were all on the team and we would look at what is the issue? What is not working first? What's not working? What's the problem? And then you look at all the contributing factors, things that can be contributing to it. Medications, environment, stressors, um, you know, there's a large number of things that can contribute to one specific in, um, issue. And you have to look at every single issue, you know, every single faucet of that, you know, pick it up, turn it around, you know, try to, to see what is, um, what's the issue, what is causing the dysfunction, and then you can address it. Like for some, it was a medication side effect. For others, it was, um, I remember this one little autistic boy who was always riding his bike in the road. The trigger was, the problem was, he liked following the yellow line. So what did they do? They laid a line down, a line down on the sidewalk for him to ride his bike along. So kept him out of the road, kept him safe, and solved the issue. Um, so that's kind of, it's like, it's problem solving, really. Um, and a lot of times with your health, with your relationships, you have to be a detective. You know, and you don't have to be Sherlock Holmes, but you do have to be able to look at, look at the situation honestly and um, try to find what's not working. And, you know, strengthen not just what's not working so that you can change it, but the areas that are working so you can strengthen those areas um, 
it's like this the, the spokes on an old wagon wheel if you lose a couple of those spokes your your wheel's going to be weak and so you need to find the weak spot and fix it this is that can be comparable to life you have to find what your weaknesses are so that you can fix it if you don't know what your problems are how are you ever going to fix it like one of the main reasons I actually um, studied psychology in school, uh, that that's my degrees are in psychology. Um, one of the main driving factor was because I wanted to fix myself. The binge eating disorder, the um, emotional eating, I wanted to fix myself. And you can't fix yourself if you don't look at the problem. If you don't focus on what caused it, um, where it's at now, and how you're going to get to where you want to be. It's a multi-step process. Um, so, like I said, I'll go into behavior modification more in a later video, but I just wanted to put that out there. Um, being a realist is very important. You need to look at things the way they are and not sugarcoat them. Um, not for yourself and not for anybody else. Look at it the way it is. And then you can decide what you need to change and what needs to stay the same. What's working, what isn't. That's really important to be realistic with yourself on so that you can be healthy in heart, mind, body, and soul. I hope, that, I hope this has been a blessing to you. I hope that it has been helpful to you. I would love to hear your feedback. Drop me a comment below. Like, share, subscribe. Yahoo bless you and keep you and give you shalom. Until next time, God bless.